What's up guys, Justin here with the SketchupEssentials.com back with another SketchUp quick tutorial for you. So in this video, which is probably going to be our last video in our series on uh, woodworking tutorials for this month, um, we're going to talk about how to model a 2x4 chest for like blankets and that sort of thing in SketchUp. So let's go ahead and just jump into it. And before I get started, I do want to thank uh, all my supporters on Patreon for supporting the show. Um, you guys are what keeps this show going. I really appreciate the fact that you uh, have decided to support me. Um, I want to give a special shout out to my new supporter, Greg Sawyer. Greg, thank you so much for ple pledging to support the show. I really appreciate it. Just so everyone knows, all, all that money goes towards getting new extensions and new things so that I can make new, more interesting interesting videos for you guys. So if you're interested in that, check out the link in the notes below. But let's go ahead and just jump into this thing. All right, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna come in here and we're gonna model out a wood case. This is actually something that uh, another YouTube, YouTuber made and built. Um, this is from uh, Jay Bates, and I'll link to his video of this series in the notes below. But um, this is basically a very simple chest that he made, but he doesn't really talk about um, at least that I saw how to create the model in SketchUp, so I just wanted to talk about that. This is a really good exercise for what we're trying to do here. And so um, what we're going to do is we're going to start off and we're actually going to just kind of model out our wood pieces. And so in order to do that, we're just going to come in here and we're going to start modeling. So I'm going to use the rectangle tool. I'm just going to draw, these are going to be about three quarters of an inch wide by probably two and a half inches thick so that's going to be the size of your framing so you're going to draw that you're going to draw that and then you're going to just extrude that to a certain height so in this case i'm going to go ahead and call in this case i'm going to call this 18 inches and i'm actually going to rotate this piece so that it's kind of along the axis that i want it to be and that's just kind of a personal preference thing you don't have to do it that way and then all we're going to do is we're going to start working with this piece so we're going to take this piece and we're going to make it a component and we'll just call this two by four end. And then we're gonna make a copy of that. And so we're gonna use the move tool in copy mode. And you can see how when I activate the move tool and click on this corner, it moves my object. You're gonna tap that control key and then click once to set this piece right up against this end. And then we're gonna move this 27 inches. So we're gonna use the move tool to move it this far apart. So that's a good way to kind of set your spacing. And then we can come in here and we can draw another two and a half inch by three quarter inch piece on this face and we'll just push pull it across. Then we can triple click on that to select everything. We can make it a component and we'll make this two by four top or We'll call it two by four long framing. You can really name these whatever you want to. Um, and then I'm just gonna use the move tool to make a copy down here. And so then you've got kind of a frame that you can start infilling with your uh, vertical framing in here. And so, and one thing to note when I'm doing all this in the outliner, I, I like to keep my naming um, in a way that keeps this stuff organized. So like I like to name everything two by four and then what it is, even though I don't know why I'm naming it two by four because these aren't two by fours. But whatever your prefix is, I like to name that and keep it uniform. So all of this framing is gonna be in here under two by four. And then I'll come in here and I'll do plywood. And I'll either do five eighths inch plywood and then a name or whatever, just something to keep it kind of organized. Like if you come in here and you start calling this long framing and this end framing, and then everything gets kind of disorganized or everything gets kind of mixed up in here it can be kind of difficult to manage and so what we're going to do is we're actually going to draw a line across this piece right here so we can figure out what our spacing needs to be and so all you're going to do is you're going to draw a line across here and then you're going to select divide and you can move your mouse and you can see how you can divide this into as many segments as you want so if you look at the red points you can see where your vertical wood framing would go so in this case, I'm just taking this and I'm just dividing this into four segments so that there's three points. And then once I get that figured out, I can come in here and frame all of this. So, or I can rough out my framing. So, and I can take this and 
we'll go ahead and call this something different. We'll call this framing vertical. And I'm actually going to come in here and rename these real quick. So I'm just changing these definitions up in the entity info. So we'll call this framing in because these aren't actually two by fours. So that wasn't really appropriate naming. But now you're just going to do the same thing where you're going to make a copy using the move tool. But in this case, you're going to move it, click on this point, and then you're going to type in times two and hit the enter key and that'll make another copy of that piece. And then now you can take this entire thing and you can make that a component and you can call that framing long side. And what that allows us to do when we do that is we can make a copy across and we'll do that in just a minute. But what we want to do in this case is we want to come in and we want to draw we want to do the same thing around this end. So you want a three quarter inch by 2.5 inch framing piece. And then we can push pull it up and actually honestly what you could do instead is we can actually take one of these in framing pieces and we can copy it because these are going to be all the same length so we're just going to do you can do edit copy or you can do a control C and then you can do a control V to paste it and then you can put it along this end right here and you can just rotate it so that way you can use the same component for all your vertical framing pieces so then we'll just kind of move this in here. Then we'll do the same thing. We'll extrude this as long as we want it to be. So in this case, we can just call this 12 inches. And we'll call this framing bottom short side or framing horizontal short side. Whatever it takes for you to for you to understand your process. And then we'll do the same thing where we'll where we'll select one of these vertical pieces, we'll copy it, we'll do a control V to paste it. We'll rotate it properly. And then we'll line the piece up. And there's a little gap here and quite honestly, I'm not really sure why. Maybe I didn't make this piece tall enough. So all I'm going to do is I'm just going to push pull that up until it gets to the correct height. And then we can just adjust this. Adjust this down. And you can see how when I adjusted the thickness, this one adjusted as well as this one because they're both copies of the same component. So now we'll just use the move tool in copy mode again to move this across. And now we've got our complete in framing piece. And so what we'll do is we'll put all of those in a component. And we'll call this framing short side. Well, now it's really easy to take these and just use the move tool to create a copy across by using this in copy mode so that now you've got all of your different framing in here. And if you remember, since we modeled everything as components, what we can do is we can come in here and we can change all of these different pieces at one time. So like I could put a hole in all of these if I wanted to and you can see how since these are all copies of the same vertical framing piece they all change at once. So that's kind of what smart modeling can do for you. And So now we can come in here and we can model out our uh, top framing. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to use the rectangle tool and I'm going to tap the right arrow key to lock this to the red axis. I'm just going to come in here and tell this to draw a two and a half inch by three quarter inch piece and then I can just push pull this so that it matches up with this end right here and what we're gonna do is we're actually gonna model four pieces in here and they're all gonna have a 45 degree angle so you're gonna cut all of these off so that they make a nice clean corner so in order to do that in this case all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use my protractor tool so I'm just gonna draw an angle so you just activate the protractor tool. It's over here in your large tool set. So view, toolbars, large tool set to turn that on. You're just gonna activate it, move it along this face, 
click to set this corner point click here and you're just going to type in 45 degrees and so once you get 45 degrees you can draw a line across this face and you can push pull this down to the bottom and it'll just go away and so you're going to do the same thing over here on this corner so then you're just going to triple click on that you're going to make it a component and we'll just call this top framing long side and you're going to do the same thing you're just going to make a copy with the move tool and you can just scale this to negative one or you can right click on it and you can select flip along axis either way and then this actually gets pretty easy because now you can come in here and you can draw this other piece out kind of inferencing So you can use inferencing along the axis, and then you can just kind of draw this edge in. You can push pull this down, and then you can just erase out your extra geometry. So that was real easy to model in. And then I just triple click, right click on it to make it a component, and then top framing, short, side. Make a copy again. Flip it. and move it in place and then you can just select all of these right click on them and you can just make in this case I'm going to make it a group because I'm not going to make a copy of this and we can just come in here and we can name this group top framing so now these are in here kind of organized as groups so I'm just going to come in here and draw a base and we'll say this is probably five-eighths of an inch we'll triple click on it we'll make it a group and we'll call this base so then all you have to do is draw out your bottom part and so in this case what we can do is we can probably make the assumption so we may actually decide that this plywood piece is going to be inside this piece of framing so I'm actually going to use the push-pull tool real quick to kind of re size that and then we're going to move it up so now it's in there but it's kind of inside this piece all right so to draw our base all we're going to do is we're just going to come in here and we're just going to draw out our piece of wood and then we'll kind of use the push pull tool to detail it so in this case we can assume we're probably going to go to about three quarters of an inch thick again and so in this case what we want to do is we want this to kind of have an arc along the middle so what we'll do is we'll go to two and a half inches here we'll figure we're gonna go up a little bit maybe a half inch we'll do the same thing over here so two and a half go up a half inch and then we'll just use the arc tool along this face to create an arc and in this case we're gonna go ahead and set our arc thickness so the bulge in here so I'm going to say that this is a half inch just for simplicity's sake and all you're going to do is you're just going to push pull this along this back piece so and then the other thing we want to do is we want to taper this across and so so we'll mess with our taper in a second but for right now I'm just going to triple click on this object and I'm just going to make it a component and we'll call this base short side and then we'll do the same thing with the long side over here so just three quarters of an inch we'll draw this piece we'll extrude it across and we're going to adjust these in a second so don't worry if they don't line up quite right quite yet we'll do the same thing over here so 2.5 inches draw a line up a half inch 2.5 inches draw a line up a half inch and then we're just going to do the same thing we'll use the arc tool to draw a line with a half inch bulge and we'll push pull that to get this face to go away so then triple click on that make component and we'll call this base long side so now what we can do is we can make a copy of this one across here and we may have to flip these in a minute and I'll tell you why but for now don't worry about it we'll make another copy 
across here. So the other thing we're gonna do now is we're gonna bevel this edge. And so to bevel this edge, all right, so what I'm actually gonna do is I'm gonna remove this, I'm gonna push pull this top piece down and kind of get it out of the way because we're actually gonna do this with the follow me tool. So I'm gonna take this piece and I'm gonna push pull it down as well. And you can see how all of those adjusted. So we're fine there. And then I'm just gonna draw a rectangle across this edge. Oh, you don't wanna do it inside your component though. I'm gonna draw a rectangle across this edge because that's gonna be a four-sided piece. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna draw a profile in here. So I'm gonna draw a profile up. It's gonna go out just a little bit, probably a quarter of an inch. And then down here, I'll draw a piece that's out to three quarters of an inch. So you can see how now I have a profile in here. Well, I'm just gonna click on this face of this object that I created and activate the follow me tool. And when I do that, that's gonna push pull this edge piece, or this, that's gonna extrude this trim piece all the way around here. So now I've got this trim piece in here as its own piece of geometry. So I'm just gonna right click and I'm gonna group that. And then I'm just gonna come in here and I'm gonna clean these up a little bit. So these need to come out to about 45 degrees. So I'll just use the protractor tool. To kind of extend that. I'll push pull this piece up and erase out my extra. We'll do the same thing over here. And remember, you're only gonna have to do this once for each piece because they're components. And so you can see how on this corner over here, this is actually backwards. So we're just gonna flip this in place. And again, I use the scale tool, but you can use a different tool if you want to. And then we're just gonna do the same thing over here real quick, which should be a lot easier now because you can use that other face as kind of a guide. Do the same thing, we'll come over here and we'll flip this. I'm gonna erase out these extra guides that I have in here. So now, You've got all your edge base pieces, you've got your trim pieces, and if you wanted to, you could come break this up so each one of these was a part of um, this piece as well. I'm not really super worried about it at this point. If you wanted to, you could come in here and you could model out some plywood back pieces. So you could just draw a rectangle across this piece and you could call that five-eighths of an inch, just make that a group. Copy it across. And then just do the same thing on this inner piece. And you could put all of those in a group and name it too if you wanted to. So interior plywood. All right, so then you can take that and you can dimension it or do whatever you want with it. So I do apologize that video got a little long. I wanted to kind of stay in depth though and kind of walk you through step by step um, how to do that. So leave a comment below and let me know what you thought of the format. Um, if you found this helpful, I just love having that SketchUp conversation with you guys. Uh, if you like this video, please remember to click that like button down below. If you're new around here, remember to click that subscribe button for new SketchUp content every week. If you like what I'm doing in this channel, please consider supporting me on Patreon. Every little bit helps, even if it's only a dollar a month. Uh, that just helps me keep bringing you new and great SketchUp content, uh, that sort of thing. But in any case, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this. I really appreciate it, and I will catch you in the next video. Thanks, guys.